Catherine Graham, Personal History Embark on an inspiring journey through the life of Catherine Graham, the trailblazing force behind The Washington Post, as narrated in her memoir Personal History. Beginning with her privileged upbringing and the influence of her fiercely egalitarian high school principal, witness Graham's transformation from a socialite eager for acceptance to an accomplished journalist and publisher making groundbreaking strides in a male-dominated world. Witness the challenges she overcame to revolutionize The Post and Newsweek, as well as her pivotal role in exposing the Watergate scandal. Catherine Graham, a young woman with big expectations. Catherine Graham was raised in an affluent household and had an ordinary childhood, but her mother's high standards pushed her to overachieve in academics and social life. Graham became popular by laughing at men's jokes at parties and dances and was an academic overachiever who participated in multiple extracurricular activities while taking piano lessons. Her mother's strict expectations taught her to be economical with the truth and to strive for excellence in everything she did. The Rise of a Journalist The journey of Catherine Graham from a nervous beginner to a successful journalist is a story of determination and grit. This summary details how Graham's relationship with her father impacted her career, and how she found her voice while working at the news in San Francisco. Catherine Graham's career as a journalist was shaped by her relationship with her father. Although he had been largely absent during her upbringing, they grew much closer while she studied at the University of Chicago. It was in their letters to each other that they realized Graham had the potential to become a journalist. After graduating, Graham took a job at the San Francisco News, though it was a difficult start for her. She was still inexperienced and knew little about the journalistic profession. However, with her father's support and encouragement, she persevered in her position as a reporter. Graham's role at the news was initially limited to fielding calls from reporters and taking down notes on what they had discovered out in the field. But gradually, she began to gain more prominence at the paper. Her first real assignment was to accompany members of the Women's Christian Temperance Union to areas notorious for their connection to prostitution, gambling, and drug dealing. The interviews and notes she collected during this assignment provided enough material for her to write her first published article. Despite the steep learning curve, Graham found joy in her work and gradually developed a taste for her newfound independence away from her influential family. Her anonymity in San Francisco allowed her to pursue her ambitions and find her voice as a journalist. This summary shows how Graham's relationship with her father and her perseverance in the face of difficulties helped shape her into the successful journalist she would become. Catherine Graham's Journey in Journalism Catherine Graham, daughter of a successful investor and public official, joined her father's newspaper, The Washington Post, in 1939 as an editor. Despite being a professional reporter in her own right, Graham was concerned about landing the job based on family connections, so she opted to work behind the scenes. She began publishing her first editorials during World War II, writing about topics that ranged from intelligence and beauty to the newfound roles of women in the war effort. Despite initially being assigned light editorials, Graham used this opportunity to develop her voice as a writer. As the Post became an outspoken advocate of the United States' involvement in the war effort, Graham's editorials became well-respected, and she reviewed books like The Escape to Life by Thomas Mann's Children, Klaus and Erica. From Wife to Boss, Catherine Graham's Struggle for Recognition Catherine Graham's husband, Phil, faced the same doubts about his qualifications to work in the Post due to his connections. With the help of an open letter from his former employers, Phil quickly rose to the top, working alongside Eugene in various public information campaigns. When Eugene left to join the World Bank, Phil became the new publisher of the Post. Although Catherine took a back seat for the next 15 years, she eventually stepped up into her role as boss. A Widow's Rise to Power After her husband's suicide and a long hiatus from the Washington Post, Catherine Graham unexpectedly became the publisher of the newspaper. She initially thought her role was supportive, but soon realized that she had to call the shots herself if the publication was to thrive. Despite the sexist environment of the time, 
Graham formed a partnership with the new chairman of the board, Fritz Beebe, as they worked to successfully navigate the newspaper's steep learning curve. Their team efforts were aided by the Post's successful market position and previous acquisitions, which provided financial stability. Ultimately, Graham's leadership and business acumen allowed for the paper's sustained success. Trailblazing Adventures in Journalism Meet Catherine Graham, the pioneering journalist who traveled the world to report landmark stories for the Washington Post. Catherine Graham was a force to be reckoned with in the world of journalism. Traveling with the editor of Newsweek, she journeyed to Japan in 1965. By the end of her trip, she became the first Western woman to be granted an audience with the Emperor of Japan. But before that, she visited Asahi, Japan's largest newspaper at the time, and wowed the firm's employees who were delighted to see a woman occupying an important position. In Vietnam, she took an open-door helicopter tour of the country. Despite her fear of heights, she bravely boarded the chopper. The ride proved to be a valuable experience that gave her insights into the ongoing conflict between the Viet Song and their American adversaries. She visited the country several times over the remaining years of the war, visiting army bases and learning the facts on the ground. Through it all, what was clear about Graham was her journalist's instinct. As she traveled the world and experienced such historical events firsthand, she gained inspiration and conviction to remain true to her profession, to report groundbreaking stories as they happened, wherever they happened. And this is exactly what made her journalism unique and trailblazing. Graham's Reformative Leadership The summary discusses how the former owner of the Washington Post, Catherine Graham, transformed the paper into a progressive voice for change by replacing the old guard of the company with fresh talent. Graham recognized the need for innovative approaches in journalism when societal values were changing in the 1960s, which resulted in the hiring of Ben Bradley, Stanley Carno, Bart Rowan, Nicholas Vaughn Hoffman, and David Broder. These innovative appointments revamped the paper's content, attracting fresh readership and subsequently leading Newsweek, a magazine run by the Washington Post Company, to transform its coverage. Bradley's respect for Graham's opinions and her leadership allowed their collaboration to be productive, enabling the duo to drive the newspaper's success. Overcoming Imposter Syndrome Publisher Catherine Graham experienced imposter syndrome due to sexist beliefs prevalent in society in the 1960s. She internalized those beliefs and deferred to her male colleagues despite being highly experienced. However, a flash of insight made her realize the need for greater equality between men and women. Graham became a keen advocate of this ideal and emphasized the importance of small details like name differences in memos. The Watergate Scandal Unveiled In the summer of 1972, The Washington Post began investigating a suspicious break-in at the Democratic National Committee headquarters. As their veteran reporter Al Lewis followed up on the story, the Post uncovered clear evidence linking the burglars to the Committee for the Re-Election of the President, CRP. Despite immense government pressure on the newspaper, Woodward and Bernstein's investigative work culminated in a historic scoop, revealing the Watergate scandal. The administration denied any involvement in the affair, and the Post faced criticism, but its objectivity prevailed. CBS later backed up the Post's claims. Two years after the scandal, Nixon was forced to resign, having attempted to spy on his political enemies. Woodward and Bernstein's work was recognized with the Pulitzer Prize. Strengths and Weaknesses Catherine Graham's leadership skills were not hindered by her lack of authority and reliance on sound advice. Her strategic decision-making skills propelled the company to success, as seen in her collaboration with investment magnate Warren Buffett to buy back half of the company's own stock. The paper's stock skyrocketed and the bold decisions made under Graham's management boosted the company's stock further. Her unwavering desire to transform and thrive, even when faced with challenges, ensured that the company she headed was well-equipped to tackle the future. Catherine Graham's life story, as recounted in A Personal History, leaves readers with an understanding of her determination, adaptability, and commitment to ethical journalism. 
Through the book, we witness her evolution from a shy young woman to the formidable publisher of The Washington Post, contributing to the exposure of the Watergate scandal that eventually led to President Nixon's resignation. Despite self-doubt and her struggle for authority in a sexist environment, Graham's ability to learn from her advisors and her talent for building strong relationships proved instrumental in guiding the company and elevating it to be an influential voice in American media. Personal history is not only an insightful account of Graham's life, but also a testament to how resilience, vision, and hard work ultimately make an impact on the world.